them didn't have that usual card on the doorknob that says, do not disturb. Had a red light that says, on the air. <laughs> and he walked in. You sound good tonight, and um, unfortunately, you are the last audience before we, we start our new policy next week. Starting next week, the audience is going to be brought to the studio in limousines. <laughs> and, and, and I stand in line for two hours. Well, you sound good tonight. Would you like to see a joke list? We have a nice, uh, 30, <laughs> nice 39 Henny young one. Uh, where is, uh, why do, now why didn't I find out what you're going to wear tonight? Look at this. <laughs> red tie, red tie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mine's double-breasted, though. Aha. Uh -huh. Where's Doctor? Where's... <laughs> Where... What happened to Doctor tonight? Where is he? Playing somewhere? Yeah, he's in Phoenix with the Phoenix Pops. Well, the Phoenix uh, Pops. Yes. Okay, good. Were you blown in here? Have you seen such wind out here? <laughs> this is crazy out here. Nothing phases Southern Californians. Uh, the big hobby among Californians when the wind comes up like this is skeet shooting evangelist toupees. <laughs> It was so windy last night. <laughs> it was so windy that the pan flute played three numbers without Zamfir. <laughs> well, folks, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. Just because you got in for free, you don't have to do that. <laughs> On the news tonight, I was watching it, and I don't understand this at all. The news covered it, as they do every year, back in Pennsylvania. Puxatawney Phil right. came out of his groundhog hole, right? Did not see his shadow, which I guess means we're going to have an early spring, right? Right. I don't understand something. We have the greatest technology in the world. <laughs> we have hundreds of million dollars worth of weather satellites that are going around this planet 24 hours a day. We have infrared sensors that can pick up a little bonfire in the Amazon forest, feed billions of bits for information into a computer. And how do we figure out what the weather's going to be next month? A smelly little rodent <laughs> comes out of a hole in the dirt in Pennsylvania. Would you explain that to me? Well, explain it to me. <laughs> no. we, have a, we have a groundhog out here. It's not a Pucks 20 Field. Kind of strange. It's a West Hollywood West. <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> Wes Hollywood West came out of his uh, burrow this morning, made a few cattery remarks about Bette Midler's new picture, then went back in. It's a, it's a, just a weird little groundhog. Have you heard about him, Tom? Yes, I have. Yes, I just figured. <laughs> Late at night, if you put your ear to his burrow, you can hear him playing his Michael Feinstein album. It's a, just, <laughs> well, let's see. Let's, let's get out of this country and go overseas and... Um, Michael Gorbachev spent most of yesterday denying rumors that he was quitting. You probably said, uh, saw the rumors, read about it. Denied rumors that he was quitting as head of the Soviet Communist Party. Now, not only did he not resign, but he elevated himself to a much higher position. He's made himself McDonald's Employee of the Month for life. <laughs> McDonald's is a big hit, as you probably know, in Moscow. They serve 30,000 Big Macs the first day. And now that they're a hit, I understand other American businesses are on their way. Pretty soon they're going to be hearing those immortal words over there. Attention, Kremlin shoppers. <laughs> Blue light special. Can't have it. Anyway, it's a big success. And you know how they really pulled it together? They sent a crack team of American experts over there to show the Russians how to do the little things like we do in America. For example, how to make the Coke dribble out of the top of the lid <laughs> all over the front of your pants. <laughs> Here's some other business news you may find exciting, or maybe not. Uh, Domino's Pizza, we heard, is merging with Sony for a new service. They're going to fax you your pizza in 30 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> See, not 30 minutes, 30 seconds. They're going to fax a pizza. 
Okay, here's a small bit of trivia. <laughs> it's one of those little things you find in the paper from time to time, and it's, it's, it's trivial, but uh, what the hell? Life is trivial. Uh, this show is trivial. We're all trivial. <laughs> You're trivial. We're all trivial. Anyway. Did you know that the bottle cap was invented, was patented on February 2nd, 1892? Bottle cap. The bottle opener was patented on February 3rd, 1892. <laughs> and the first guy to forget the opener and was beaten senseless by his uh, hunting buddies was done on February 4th, 1892. So they all went in order there. First, first the bottle cap, and then the opener... And then the first guy who forgot the opener was beaten senseless. They all happened three days in a row a long time ago. <laughs> if I had a spit valve, I'd shake it out right now, too. <laughs> always shaking out the spit valve. guy's always spit shaking out the spit valve. I wish <laughs> Tonight, Mr. Carl Reiner is gracing our... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lovely young actress who was in um, in Dirty Dancing with Patrick Swayze. Jennifer Grey, who's in another thing coming up on Andy's show. So stay where you be, and we're coming right back. Chummy? What, the premier? You called him Michael Gorbachev? <laughs> what? You called him Michael. I Michael, call... next week you'll be saying Gorby. I said... <laughs> I said Michael Gorbachev? Michael Gorbachev. <laughs> Are you putting me on? No, am I right? <laughs> I guess that's the way it starts, isn't it? Just... <laughs> Little neurons start to flake off and pretty soon it builds up like dandruff and someday... <laughs> My, uh, well, I was thinking of Michael Jackson at the time. <laughs> and it's uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah. I mean, uh, Michael Gorbachev. Yes. Well, they probably call him. I think the literal translation in Russia is Michael Gorbachev. We say Mikhail over here. Anyway. <laughs> now, the last two days that I've been here, I've been reading uh, some rather shocking news clippings, kind of sleazy little journalistic things, uh, to boost our ratings. Right. Because we are, as you probably know, as all shows are, are in February sweeps or ratings months. And if you watch your local news, you'll see all kinds of things. So the last couple of days, we've read some, you know, unpleasant little items. And people have asked me, they say, John, how can you sink so low? Well, here's how low we can sink, friends. <laughs> this is his sweeps. Here is a, from Lawrence, Kansas. It says, now this is for real. We've had it blown up here. You from Lawrence, Kansas? Well, Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> well, you are, I hope. Yeah. Are you close by, Lawrence? As long as we've opened his dialogue. Do you know where Lawrence is? Wichita. Excuse me? Wichita. No, 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 that's not the question. <laughs> How far from Wichita is Lawrence? 180 miles. Hmm? <laughs> in, a, in a straight line? <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is happening around Lawrence, Kansas. A horror story only imagined around campfires was a 28-year-old man's reality Thursday night. Oh, he is trapped for seven and a half hours in the pit of a campground outhouse. <laughs> the poor man, what happened? He had his wallet out that had a couple hundred bucks in it, and he, I guess, put it on the the little seat, and it fell through. Oh. And he tried to retrieve it. I'm sorry to tell you, and he fell through and apparently could not get back out through the opening. Uh, uh, honey, look at this. Read this, honey. I'm not making this up. The sheriff said he was embarrassed and humiliated, and when he was freed, he was ready to leave. And I'll bet you... <laughs> and I'll bet you nobody tried to stop him either. <laughs> Any there is our cheesy little uh, yes. ratings booster for tonight. Isn't that horrible? Terrible. The guy said, I, I can't imagine anything worse than that. 
And they, they heard knocking. The forest rangers heard it, you know. Oh. Okay, anyway, that's... Uh... How many of you are familiar about an incident that happened recently on, on the Queen Mary with some of the employees who um, had mustaches? Yeah. Well, if you don't know, the Queen Mary was uh, purchased by the Disney Corporation, I guess, what, a year or so ago? And the Disney Company, I guess it's their right, has a very strict dress code and the manner of appearance for all their employees. So they had about 200 Queen Mary employees, had mustaches, and they were ordered to shave. Three people refused. They said, no, one of them said, hey, I've had this, you know, mustache for 30 years, and it's part of me, and I'm not going to shave it. They were fired. Two of them on Christmas Eve. Hmm. I guess it's all right. That's Disney's prerogative, I guess. But didn't Walt Disney have he a mustache? Had a mustache. Yes. I mean, he couldn't even work at Disneyland? <laughs> but that is true. They have, there's not mustaches. Here's some more actual grooming rules for working at Disney, as it were quoted in the papers. For example, anytime a sideburn curves further into a cheek in front than it does toward the ear in back, follow that? If it flares more this way than it flares back that way, it becomes, according to Disney, a flared sideburn and must be trimmed. <laughs> if you want to wear a wig or a hairpiece and work for Disney, you have to have medical verification from a doctor. For women, hostess, now this is not outlandish. Hostesses are required to wear traditional underwear. <laughs> now, what, what is traditional underwear <laughs> for a woman? I'm, I'm serious. I'm not trying to... Well, I understand a bra is traditional, but... Well, what, would be under, what are traditional underpants? In other words, you couldn't wear a, a string bikini or one of those things? No. Well, well I know you couldn't. You <laughs> could when you were younger, but not at your age now. I guess a bra, underpants, hosiery, and a slip. In other words, I guess none of those thong bikinis are... As a condition of your continued employment with Disneyland, you were responsible for maintaining an appropriate size and weight. Fingernail tip should not exceed one-fourth of an inch beyond the tip of the finger. Well, needless to say, a lot of people have been turned down over the years because of their appearance, and not all of them were people. <laughs> Let me explain further. <laughs> You're probably saying, what does he mean by that? Yes, yes. what well, does he mean? Well, you know, Disney is famous for their cartoon characters. We all know Mickey Mouse and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and all that. A lot of cartoon figures have been rejected because they did not come up with the rigid standards of decency required by the Disney organization. Would you care to see some of those? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Let me show you some of the rejected <laughs> cartoon figures that were not, probably not even considered by Disney. Or were never submitted. Jessica Rabbit. Just barely missed past the decency test. One that failed was this forest creature featuring the voice of Jessica Hahn. <laughs> Bimby. <laughs> and they said no. No. Rejected. They said no way. Yeah. All right, now the fox and the hound, as you know, is one of Disney's most enduring cartoon features. Disney drew the line at hiring these characters, Red Fox and the Tax Hounds. <laughs> they said no, no, no. Or they said no, no, no. What's that? They do it in funny little voices. <laughs> Okay, it's my show. I can do that if I want to. I want to do impressions and go, yeah, I can do that. Now, Disney knows loves the cute animal couples, Bambi and Thunder, Chip and Dale. But it's a bad idea. This is one of the worst, to pair up two animals that are natural enemies. That's why they rejected this duo, Ollie Owl and Ronnie Rabbit. <laughs> you can see Ronnie Rabbit in Ollie Owl's jaws. Yet. Okay. And what do we have here? After Jiminy Cricket became a star, a lot of insect actors tried their luck. Disney immediately showed the door to this nasty little insect, Danny Mosquito. <laughs> now, some of the applicants didn't even make it to the interview. Tragically, this cartoon animal's career ended in the Disneyland parking lot, where he was renamed Squishy Squirrel. <laughs> Exactly what they said at Disney. <laughs> That's why I'm showing these to you, so you can boo and get all this hostility out of your system. 
Now, Disney has a popular kid show called The Raccoons, right? Right. Featuring Bert Raccoon and Melissa Raccoon. But one member of the Raccoon family is thrown out for wearing too much eyeshadow, and of course that was Tammy Raccoon. <laughs> sometimes you gotta... Sometimes you gotta hit them right in the eyes with the stuff. <laughs> what do we have here? The California singing races were a big hit, right? In the 80s, but Disney wouldn't even give an audition to this copycat act featuring an annoying shriveled fruit, Andy Pruney. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, you're right. Now, as you know, let's see. Uh, princes and wizards are always popular, but some occupations don't fit Disney's squeaky clean image. That was the case with these two characters. First, a flying Brooklyn plumber named Peter Can. <laughs> That's right, Peter can. It's sweeps weeks, folks. <laughs> and his sewer worker buddy. And of course, that would be Stinkerbell, right? Right there. <laughs> didn't even get into Disney's office. This flying elephant didn't make it. You can see it here flying over terrified humans. Dumpo. <laughs> Bad image. Bad image. From Topo Gijo to Mickey and Minnie, America loves cartoon mice with silly voices. But nobody loved this rodent who got his high-pitched voice the hard way, Pee Wee Vermin. <laughs> oh, that's right. Anything here as we go along. <laughs> bit is running a little long. We have a long show. Seemingly made much longer by this. <laughs> now, as you know, Disney hates violence. They don't mind shooting old Yeller and Bambi's mother. But they drew the line at this oots oozy toting woodland creature, Bambo. I edited right down to that one, didn't I? We only have two more. Let's see here. You think this one will work? Disney sometimes tests his cartoon on children, but the children screamed in terror when they saw the nanny at the Vatican Embassy in Panama, Manny Poppins. <laughs> Marginal, marginal. One more. One more. Okay, all right, all right. Gee, we're doing our best here. You know, we don't, we don't intentionally do a bad show. You know, it's like people say, boy, it was a lousy motion picture. You, you come out to do a good picture. We come out to do a good television show. Some are good, some are bad. But we don't try to be bad. People don't seem to understand that. There are, like hills. A there are hills and <laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, damn, you know, we work at this. We, we try. We, we draw these things. We try to write funny little things, and, and people boo, and it hurts. <laughs> Why can't I get laughed? Oh. Damn betcha. <laughs> now, here's a little known fact. <laughs> Disney held open auditions for the Seven Dwarfs. Three of the rejects were a hotel owner, a preacher, and a bad boxer named Bitchy, Weepy, and Cooney. <laughs> well, we get up there. There you are, Ken. Okay, sure. Oh, well, one other thing here. One, one thing I wanted to point out, for the past nine years on the show, most of our artwork has been done by Don Locke, and he's marvelous. But Don was busy on another job this week. All of the cartoons that you see, those little characters, were, were drawn by one of our NBC pages, Brian Hardwick. Brian, where are you? Here's Brian, right up there. Good stuff. I'm only so sorry, Brian, we didn't have the material to match your, your cartoons. <laughs> Cartoons were good. What, what, are you, what are you pointing your watch for? Time for your Geritol or what? <laughs> what? I can read that from here. I... <laughs> More of the show after this message of interest. Even with one eye, both eyes. All right, we'll be back. A couple things coming up. There's, there's a funny show on NBC tomorrow at, uh, what, what time is it on? Amen. Late at night. 
Well, it's on that Saturday night, right? Yes. And the big wedding is tomorrow. You know Thelma? Yes. She gets married to a Reverend Reuben Gregory tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, right. it's a funny show. Funny show, so watch it with Sherman Helmsley. And Friday night or Saturday, S Sunday. Sunday. Got... Sunday at 8, we have the best of all practical jokes. You're in it when we wow. get you, and when you nail me... What a weekend. ...with my limousine filled with things belonging to NBC. Was that where oh, I got yeah. all the stuff oh, yeah. and put them in Ed's limo years ago? Yeah. In the trunk of his car. Then we had phony police out here checking in the cars as they were leaving NBC. Right. And they asked Ed to open the trunk, and here is... We had typewriter paper, typewriters, yeah. erasers. We had toilet paper. Pencil, stationery, toilet paper, and you knew nothing about it, no. but your driver, Patrick, did. Yeah. And you were very embarrassed. Yeah. Should we take a break first yes. or bring out Carl? No, take a break and save Carl. Take a break and save Carl. <laughs> take a break and save Carl. Take I break. love this television talk. Huh? Take a break and save Carl. Because if I bring him out, then we're going to have to take a break right away, right? Right. Well, yes. Well, you can do whatever you want, sir. <coughs> oh, 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 oh. Is it contract time again? <laughs> it's contract time in the back. Let's bring Carl out. What? Yes. yes. Comedian, actor, producer, director, writer. Yes. Carl Weiner. <laughs> And we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay where you are. Okay, folks, and once again, here is Carl Weiner. Here's Carl Reiner. Okay, who else we got? <laughs> Carl is so good, you'd hardly know he's here. He does his stuff and steals away. Now, I know what he's doing now. He, now he's not going to come in. No, he's not going to come in. He's a trooper. He, he's a trooper. Here he comes. Be with me in a minute. <laughs> oh, oh. Carl Reiner. Right. <laughs> Knowing you, you did it out. <laughs> no, I'm swearing now. Right, There's no sound back there. I'm in a little cubby there. You didn't hear me. No, I didn't hear you. Knowing no, you, you would put him on and sit there for no, five minutes. I would never do that. Oh, yes, we did that on the old we, show of shows remember? once. We sat for four minutes and didn't do anything in front of an audience. We tried that one night here. We yeah, sat we and stared at the camera, and it, uh, people get very upset, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah, I don't want to ever do that again. I just did that by mistake. I didn't Wait a minute. That. I didn't. Well, very what dis happened? Very distinguished. I, I, it's, I'm very a disturbed. Goatee? A goatee? I'm very disturbed by it, because I haven't, I haven't do been doing much lately, and I was going out to Disneyland to look for a job on the steamboat. <laughs> And they turned me down. Of course they, they did. They turned me down. But they didn't tell me why. I thought it was my age. No facial hair. Facial hair. That's right. Well, I'm growing this facial hair for two reasons. Is this for a role coming up? No, no, no. For Yes, for a role in life. I started writing a novel, and um, I didn't look like... I looked in the mirror, and I said, you don't look like a novelist. So I let this grow, and I sit there... And feel you feel like a novelist when you have something to tickle at. Yeah. And then, then that's one reason. That's not enough, really. And I realized for years I've been trying to grow hair. I need hair. Yes. I love hair. I love the fact people... I don't, I don't have it. So I figured I can grow hair. Yes, you can. I'll grow it here, and I'll sit on a chair upside down sometime. And, and people won't know. <laughs> they won't know. They won't know. No, I, I just... No, just it, it, it looks itchy. I don't know why, but... It, yeah, it, 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 it doesn't itch me. Yeah. But it does... If I yeah. kissed you, you would say, don't well, do that. That's <laughs> a possibility that probably won't, yes. won't come into come uh, to being for But it, uh, when I looked in the mirror, and I said, I could get $125 an hour um, asking people, and uh, what did your mother do? It's a really it's a good psychiatric beard. Yes, it is. Yes, I could open an office. Anyway. Would you like to sure. know sure. why you marry so many times? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, you... Uh... You have been married to the same woman all of your life? 47 years. I'm 47 years. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you see, right away. Sure. Sure. Automatic applause getter. Well, how many years have you been married this last time? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> this last marriage. Well, over two years. Two years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You see, for you, that's a lifetime. Oh, come, no, for me, it's not. It's not so <laughs> oh, right. 
But I never read about you. You seem to lead a, a, a quiet life. Uh, you, you're never in the tabloids. There's not a, a scintilla of scandal in your life. No. Well, what is the, the, the craziest thing you've ever done that would make one of these tabloids? I've never done anything Didn't really. think at all? Did you no. ever go to a party and drink too much and come out? And, and there's the photographer, and they say, ah, oh, Carl Reiner, obviously stewed to the gills or no, something. No, never None happened. No, okay. isn't that awful? No, uh, it's not awful. No. I'm just... But I mean, I mean, uh, it would be nice once in a while for them to make a mistake and say, Carl Reiner is a sex maniac, you know. But, <laughs> but I don't think I'd like that. I don't yeah. think I'd like to be known as a great lover. Right. Because then you'd be doing that all the time, and you wouldn't have time to do the other fun things. Yeah. What are they? Yes, what well, I was going to say. <laughs> and, and what would those be? Uh, yeah. But that's true. You lead a rather quiet yes, existence. Yes, yes. It's a nice Which life. is nice, and it's a nice attitude. I enjoy it. I yeah. really do. I have... Uh, I'm, I'm mad in my quiet way. I do mad things, but not, not? nothing that gets in the tabloids. Yeah. I don't drop my pants in places I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I mean, that would get in the tabloids. If I, if I did that here, you think I'd get the tabloids? Yeah, you'd probably make it. No, no, no. Don't, no, don't even encourage him. <laughs> he would do it. He would do it. Now, you, you've been, you're not a, a, a fawning person. Uh, you, I mean, you've worked with a lot of celebrities in your life. Who would you like to meet you've never met? Did you ever think of that? I mean, if you could meet one person that no, you, you, know you something... might be in awe of. You know, that's the problem. I think I... There are people probably I would like to meet, but if I did meet them in person, I wouldn't know what... To, they're so smart, I wouldn't know what to ask them. I wouldn't know what to talk like, about. Like who? Well, I mean, any of the great scientists. I mean, the, the people who know about the unified field theory. I wouldn't know what to ask them. I read all the science magazines, and I, I read all the stuff, and I almost know what they're talking about, but I don't quite. Yeah. And then if I had it explained to me by a very smart person, I'd sit there and have to act like I knew what they're talking about. Yeah, well, you know right. about the unified field theory and all that. Um, no, not yeah. that. Well, I but know I, a little bit about it. But I met you, and I'm not that one of my I mean, you're smart. Well, you're yeah. not choked up about that, are you? No, no. no, I don't know who that would be. I do like being in the company of people like Gore Vidal, who you can listen that. to talk. And he's going to give a speech out here, and I might go just listen to him. I think I would be a little uncomfortable around some great philosopher. Maybe, I guess, and that's going to be Mortimer Adler or somebody like that, where you're sitting around exposing on in philosophy and, and yes. deep, deep thoughts. I, would I wouldn't know what to say to Dan Quayle. <laughs> Either does Marilyn Quayle. I mean, it's not... Uh, I think the vice president is, uh, you know, he's the butt of jokes, but I, I think he's a pretty bright, pretty bright man. Yes, you know? I, you know, I, it's easy, you know. That happens to be his rule. All vice presidents are full of, oh, yes. historically, that, that, fulfill that yeah. role for comedians. Yeah, well, he gets, uh, you're like the vice right, president right, here. Right, yeah. But he he's pretty, pretty, treats you pretty well for the... <laughs> is this your dog? That's my dog, and how did he get loose? Oh, oh. Well, call him, what's, what's his name? His, that's Homer. Homer? Homer. Yeah, Homer. Oh, God. Homer. 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 Yeah. You know, I, I, I really asked. I like Homer. That's a, that's a good name. My, my father's name was Homer. Really? You're yeah. Kidding. No, my dad's name was Homer. They oh, never called him and that. And you don't feel badly that this dog is named like your father? Well, no. I think it's a good, solid name. You know, I, I love the fact he's out here because, oh, I was going to show you this. Uh, when he was dropped on my desk ten years ago while we were doing Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Well, this is Steve. Steve that's Martin. Steve Martin. Well, look at this. Can you get With that? the puppy? Uh, that's With how big puppy. he was. And I didn't know he would grow to this size. And then three months later, he, he grew to that. That's You've got a small pony here, haven't you? <laughs> this is Three months later with Mel Brooks and his son, Max. Now, I'm trying, to, this I'm is... trying to determine what the breed of this animal is, and I am stumped. Oh, I love you asking that. I, I, First of all... His mother was an Australian... No, an It looks like there's some Labrador of some kind in here. Australian Shepherd. The mother, they told us it was... The father who did this job, we don't know who it is. If there's somebody out there who knows of a dog who did an Australian Shepherd ten years ago in September... <laughs> Please write me, and then I will know what his job... Because I'm stopped you in the no street idea. all the time and say, what is he? And I'll say, he's one of these guys. What he is is the world's greatest. He's a, uh, does something that... I like mutts. You know, he, you know? he does the greatest thing. I think thoroughbred... Or not thoroughbred. Pedigree dogs sometimes are highly overrated. Mutts are good. Look at you know? He's, oh, he's one that. of the great shedders in the look world. Nice and I'll show you later. Oh, look at it. Oh, this is nothing. I will show you how he sheds. That's I a nice let dog. him brush past me. Right. We're going to take a break. We're coming okay. right. Stay where you are, Homer. Yeah, Homer. Yes, is a uh, 
As I mentioned earlier, Jennifer Grey is a young actress who starred opposite Patrick Swayze in a, in a big hit for both of them called Dirty Dancing. And she has a much uh, heavier role coming up on NBC next week in a miniseries called Murder in uh, Mississippi, which is based on the uh, 1964 killing of the three young civil rights workers in that state. Uh, the first episode airs this Monday night at 9. Would you welcome Jennifer Grey? Jennifer! <laughs> Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, my heart. Is yours like pounding like a lab rabbit? Let me just... Help stop. <laughs> How do you do this? Man? Usually during the monologue, it starts and just goes completely haywire. That's what they say to do. Take, oh, hi there. Take three hi big, there. deep breaths. How are you? I'm good. How I've are known you? your father. I don't know how many people know this, but your father is Joel Gray. Yes. And I've known Joel for years. Yes. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, he told me he was on this show. He, I said, you know, what should I talk about? What should I do? He yeah. said... Did he give you some advice or something? Well, you know, he said, well, I don't know what you should do. Last time I was there, I went out and sang a ballad in a tuxedo with no pants. Yeah? I was like, uh-huh. But you can't do that. Well, no. Were you folks... Did Carl has got a, a children, about Rob, of course, in the, uh, the entertainment business. Were your folks happy when you wanted to go into it, or did they kind of fight it? Because a lot of people do, because you have to learn to fight rejection, and unless you have the talent, they're going to say they'd rather you go another direction. Well, it's, it's very hard. It's a very hard business, and if you're in it, you know how difficult it can be. Right. So I, I think the idea of putting your kids in that situation is... You know, it's tricky, and it is hard, but at least, like, they, I knew what I was getting into, so yeah. I have what's no first, What's the first thing you did? Well, I did, um, I was an understudy off-Broadway. Really? Yeah, in a play called Album, and then I was in a movie called Reckless with Daryl Hannah and Aidan Quinn, right. and I did Cotton Club, and I played Nicolas Cage's wife, and I did uh, American Flyers. Yeah. Did you pick up your dancing from uh, a lot of from your dad? Well, I, that was the only thing I was allowed to do when I was a kid. I was only allowed to dance. I wasn't allowed to act. I, they said, okay, if you want to be an actress, you just have to take dance classes, go to school. And that right. was it. You know, I wasn't really allowed to go out there and do it. Were your it. parents strict? They were really liberal. I had, like, the groovy parents that every kid wanted. You know, they were very cool. And they were like, God, you're so great. You know, your, your parents are so cool and great. And then, you know, of course, I had adolescence and kind of changed. <laughs> you know, all the rules changed all of a sudden. It was like... Yeah. Who? What? Oh, when, when you bring guys I think I'm home, having a heart attack. What do you mean? You they know? check your dates out when they, brought, when they brought them home, you mean? He terrified. My dad terrified my dates. What is that? Why do, why do fathers do that with daughters? They don't do it with, with sons, do they? Well, why do Son you goes out and they say, hey, go out and have a good time. And all of a sudden, as soon as you have a daughter. <laughs> different, right? <laughs> Quite different. Protective. Very. Very. I think most sons can have children, that's why. <laughs> Deep thought there, yeah. Is this, this role coming up is, is a kind of a departure, isn't it? I mean, this is uh, well, based on a... Uh, of course, Gene Hackman did a, a kind of a version of this, but I guess it was more... Uh, if not based on actual facts, right? In Mississippi Burning. Well, this is more about the civil rights activists themselves right. instead of, you know, the FBI agents. And I think this is, a, from what I've heard from the people who were alive then, you know, this is more close to the facts. This is really dealing with you know, what it was like for these civil rights workers, and it's about the people who fought for it. Yeah. So it's, it's great to be able to be a part of something that means something that is, that is important, I think. You yeah. Know? Of course, you were young, very young at that time, or you were not even around when all that happened, well, the marches around. and so forth. I was four, 1964. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a good actress? Do you like it? I mean... Am I good? Yeah, well, I mean... They, so somebody said, when somebody asks you that, you should always say yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Jimmy yeah. Cagney always says, can you dance? He'd say, oh, I'm a great dancer. Then he'd go learn to dance. In other yeah. words, if you're in the entertainment business, can you sing? this? oh, yeah, I can sing well. Then go learn how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's coming up for you after this? Well, um, I'm in the middle of something right now, and I can't talk about it today, but... You got a boyfriend? Is that a silly question? Well, I'm trying to stay single. Do you know what that's like? No. <laughs> Not in my vocabulary. Well, I mean, while you're working, you mean you want to stay single? Yes. Am I allowed to ask a question? As Certainly. A guest? Dirty Dancing was, you know, I just adore Dirty right. Dancing. And you did it so well. Now that the. Yes, but now that the <laughs> Lombata is here, the Lombata. shouldn't she be doing a movie about the Lombata with your, your Bata? 
I think it's supposed to be a Spanish. A Spanish to do it. I think it's in a Spanish. Oh, but anybody started, can Started, no, on. but then it went to Paris, and now it's caught on here. But that's not a dance. That, that's, you can be arrested for most of that stuff. <laughs> that's a, I think that's a 502 or something like that. You, you were doing this. We got... We have time for the clip. We got a, a small clip from the show coming up? Yes, sir. Does it need a setup at all? No, sir. Just fine clip. Okay, watch the monitor. Here's a clip from your upcoming thing that starts on NBC. It took 17 calls to get the water back on. How many do you think it's going to take for the electricity? I don't care if they turn it all off. We're not leaving. Oh, God. No. You know what I could go for right now? What? A Sabrette's hot dog. Oh! And an egg cream. Oh, oh! <laughs> I would trade, I know, I would trade four egg creams and two Sabrettes hot dogs for one hot pastrami sandwich. Oh, God, with mustard? Oh, oh with God, with rye, with okay. oh, oh, my God, the juice, the oh, oh, oh the no, cream stop, 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 stop. <laughs> mm, actually, you know what I'd settle for at this point? Mm. I'd settle mm. for just one person being nice to me, just one person smiling at me. Yeah. You know what I miss the most? Mm. Pigeons. Pigeons? <laughs> I do. I miss pigeons. They're all dirty feet tap dancing on the windowsill. I'm not married to a pigeon lover. I'm not. Is this the wife of that loving Jew that almost got run over today? Well, that was just a warning to get your sorry butt out of town. Another one. We are good at this. I think we should clear something up. I mentioned I was confused because uh, this is not a miniseries, is it? No, it's just one night. It's just one night, guys. Yeah, it's Monday night. It's on Monday night. It says here the first episode. It's not a miniseries on NBC. It's 9 o'clock on NBC Monday night, right? Right. Wish you good luck with it. Oh, thanks a lot. We'll be right back. Here we are.